thank you very much for being with us. And you know, there, there are some great results. When I left the office, the, the stock was considerably up. It's fantastic. Um, I, I know Mr. Danon is, is, has joined the, the company. That he will, he will begin up. We'll join on Tuesday, but we'll join on Tuesday. imminent. Um, and I was just wondering, really, what what what's going to happen with this U.S. business uh, division? What it's been loss making. You expect it to make it to be for it to be loss making until the second half of 2005, and a, a sell off is looking unrealistic. So, how are you going to restructure that? The first point is in the U.S. We now have three business units: one outsourcing, stable, growing. Loss making still, but that's the ramp up cost of these huge outsourcing contracts that was uh, uh, scheduled, that was organized. And now it's part of a global outsourcing division headed by an American manager operating from London. And I'm very f confident that they will improve the business profile very quickly. Second, we have a, a local professional division growing profitable. So. I can now focus on the consulting part. In the consulting part, big things have been delivered. So we are now stable. So we sold more than what we could invoice. So we have a, a backlog inc increasing. That's an improvement. We clean bad products. So now it's time to focus on the, the cost structure. And it's not only a question of profit margin. It's also the purpose to reduce the break-even point so that we can sell, be more competitive, and grow. And that will be that has been my priority since January 1st. I have designed a plan. The, de the plan is nearly ready. And I was waiting for Pierre Danon to join next Tuesday. And he, we, we discussed and he committed to execute the plan, to deliver the plan, and probably deliver more the plan. He's very talented. He has worked in the US. He worked for 18 years for Xerox. So he has not only a French culture, but a truly multinational culture. And he will be the executive chairman of our North American operations. Outsourcing division, just briefly, how do you think that's going? I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's an area of growth, something that you'd like to invest heavily in. Uh, undisputedly, it's growing. Uh, where we can uh, uh, put our mark on that market, it's by focusing on what we call transformational outsourcing, where we can combine consulting capabilities plus pure outsourcing skills. Uh, I, I wouldn't compete with the giants like IBM or CSC in that segment. But when it's uh, 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 when truly innovation matter, we can bring something different. We I think we have a, a good skill in managing cost, in optimizing production, but we can renew systems, and and we won some of our best wins uh, against players like Accenture. I think we are all there just to combine innovation and cost optimization, and I think that's that's our skill. Um, how does the Standard and Poor's cut? the rate cut affect this? It, it's pretty strange because on the one hand, our customer asks us what's going on. And then uh, we show them our balance sheet, which is extremely sound. Our, our, we have no debt. Absolutely. We have a, a positive cash exceeding 400 million euro plus the proceeds of a convertible bond. I think we have more than 1.2 billion of euro of cash available, gross cash. The net cash is less than that. So it may happen that I, I uh, have to call a CEO to explain him uh, the fact that Standard & Poor's was concerned by our margin recovery, but not at all by our, our, the liability or our ability to, to guarantee some liability. Uh, it may happen, too, that our group CFO takes a, a, a plane and, and gets to the customer to explain him that. So far, uh, that hasn't discouraged one single customer. And I agree with you because it's a backward-looking thing. It doesn't actually reflect the present. So That's what I would think, absolutely. but uh, tell Standard & Poor's people. One analyst at CSFB tells me that the company's staff costs continue to outweigh those of its peers and that it reduces profitability, even as you know, contracts are growing. How do you, how do you see uh, that? Uh, that? I would say the main point is probably the business lines where we are. Uh, uh, if I take the example of Société Transitielle, which is the most profitable division at this stage, it's local people would say body shopping, which I would deny. It's, it's more quality than that, but it is truly labor intensive. So in terms of uh, uh, people intensity, in terms of percentage of production cost, that's the highest division in the group and the most profitable. So I would say depends on the balance of different service line. What I would still say is we are too heavy in too many expensive people, not on fees, but supporting the business. And that must be reduced and cleaned. Last question. Organic growth, 
apparently, according to some analysts that I've spoken to, is mainly down to two big contracts, TXU and the Indian Revenue, which are huge. Um, but what's the underlying growth excluding these contracts? What I've shown this morning uh, is that excluding these mega contracts, and I would add the third one that uh, we start producing in January uh, uh, with Schneider, excluding that, we are now growing the project business, certainly in Europe, and we start being growing the, that same business in the US. So uh, in the second half of 2004, we grew the consulting business by 1%, the system integration business by 5%, and the Société Transitionnelle business by eight. So you see, all our business lines are growing, but it's true to say that the outsourcing business line is the one that is just splendid. They, they, they will exceed 15% next year. Thank you very much.